you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I rise to support the Government's decision to use its Section 35 powers with respect to the Gender Recognition Reform Bill in Scotland. Now, like many other honourable members, I'm afraid I haven't had a chance to read this in full and in detail, so I will focus my remarks on a few key areas that I think are significantly important. Firstly, in paragraph 27, the Government rightly points out that the Bill does not create sufficient safeguards. Um, and I think, indeed, the Government is very right to be concerned about uh, fraudulent and malign applications, uh, with the implications for child safeguarding. Now, this morning in the Education Select Committee, we had Professor Alexis Jay, who, of course, chaired the uh, inquiry into institutional child sexual abuse. And it was harrowing to hear the stories of decades of child sexual abuse uh, throughout institutions across this country. And there's one key feature of that abuse, which is that predators will exploit any loophole they can find to get access to children. And that is, I'm afraid, what will happen uh, with this bill. We shouldn't be asking how easy is it for someone who's uncomfortable with their sex to obtain a GRC. We should be asking how easy is it for a predator to get access to children. And I'm afraid this bill would make it vastly easier for a predator to get access to children, to change their sex, to change their gender, with an eye to exploiting loopholes of accessing children um, and women in particular. No, I'm going to, I've only got four minutes. So. Um, the naivety that this has been written with is absolutely astounding and hugely worrying. I think also the, the reduced, reduction of the age limit to 16 is a significant safeguarding risk. The human brain does not end development until about the age of 25. You can't drive a car when you're 16. There are an awful lot of things that you're not allowed to do legally when you're 16 because you cannot assess the long-term implications on your welfare, changing your legal gender with a potential route to long-term changes to your fertility, um, your sexual function, your health. is not suitable for 16-year-olds. There's a huge safeguarding risk. Section, uh, paragraphs 30 and 48. Uh, mentioned membership on the grounds of sex and single-sex spaces. Sex Matters did a report recently uh, looking at the impact on single-sex spaces uh, and the uh, ability of men to access them through, through changing their, their gender. The one thing women say is, I never went back. I never went back to that swimming pool. I never went back to that counselling class. For many women, the, the, the dignity of being a women-only space, of knowing that there's no men, there are no men that are going to be there, is so important. We will see a chilling effect on important single-sex uh, rights if this uh, goes through. Um, and I think, you know, as a woman, I fully understand uh, the threats to dignity and safety that this poses because it will change the social contract. In this country, we recognise that in toilets, in changing rooms, in public spaces, there are areas where only women allow, are allowed. I had an experience recently in a restaurant where uh, a man dressed as a woman walked into the toilets. I was on my own in the toilets. He stood behind me and stared at me into the mirror, looking at me in my eyes. Now, I have no idea if he intended me any harm, but, but, but my instinct, my evolved instinct as a woman was to be frightened because unlike almost any other species, women are far less powerful than men. We can't defend ourselves. That's why we have, no, it's a fact. The difference in strength between men and women is phenomenal. That's why we have separate sex uh, categories for sport. Women are evolved to be wary of men in intimate spaces. That's why we have single-sex spaces. They must continue to exist for the safety and privacy of women. This threatens that social contract. Finally, it threatens the understanding of our law, which should be based on fact. And you cannot change your sex any more than you can change your place of birth or who your parents are. Now, I fully understand the complex arguments involved in this, and we should treat it with compassion. But if the law is not based on fact, then how can we trust the law? That is why the government is absolutely right to serve this notice.